It's your boy, the Incredible Man. Yes, I'm back at it again. And I felt a little bad, so I apologize for not posting the last couple days, man. I felt a little under the weather, and I just didn't have the energy to do anything, man. I felt real bad. But I'm back with my normal energetic self, and I'm bringing you guys 911 Season 3, Episode 4, man. I think, I think that's what it is. Let's get right into it because a lot of stuff happened this episode and honestly, I thought it was going to be a nice mellow episode after the big tsunami, but it was way beyond what I expected it to be. Also have this whole episode revolving around siblings because Hen and um, her wife want to have another child. So there was a lot going on. Athena didn't really have a major role this episode, so we don't really have to talk about her. But everyone else was pretty much involved, so let's dive right in and talk about it, man. Um, so yeah, this episode started off with a fire drill at a high-rise building, and the whole team was talking and having like their normal banter with each other. And they were like, "Yeah, well, we were late. There was there was there was a problem on the intersection and everything," and. They're like, well, you're going to have to explain that to the new fire marshal. The new fire marshal? Why, why were they making it such weird faces when they said the new fire marshal? Then we see the new fire marshal, and it's Buck. And Buck is giving them all kinds of grief about them. That's why I thought this episode was going to be nice and fun and light. And we were teased about the um, family falling off the edge of the cliff last week. So that was something that we knew were com we knew what was, what was coming. But... I didn't expect this whole episode to just shift like that. And I did not expect Buck to be the new fire marshal and play with the guys and the company about being the new fire marshal and teasing them a little bit. It was fun. It was very fun to see him in that role. Um, but that's not that's not the role he wants. He wants to be a firefighter again. But this whole episode, there was a lot. There was minor instances when things that happened. And then there was like some major things. So let's talk about some of the minor things and then we'll dive right into the major um, yeah, so one of the minor things, in my opinion, was um, the guy at the high-rise building, which led into a major thing, but the guy suffered a seizure in the stairs from the flashing um, fry drill lights, and he ended up bumping into someone, and then <laughs> when he fell, and he bumped into everyone else, and they just fell like dominoes. <laughs> I felt bad because I knew people were going to get hurt, but it was just so funny to see like a human domino effect fall down the stairs. And I'm not laughing about the seizure itself. I'm laughing about the fact that well, like when he fell into everyone, there was like a human domino effect um, because seizures are very serious. Um, after that, <laughs> then Buck comes back and he he's del he delivers the, the results to the firehouse. And this is when we see a major point. So I'm I'm starting to think that Ronda Rousey may be in the cast credits. They had her listed as still as just a guest star, but she's at the 118 and she's taking Buck's place temporarily. But would she be considered a series? Uh, well, maybe not a regular. I, I'm I'm st I'll stick with a guest star for now. I don't want to I don't want to speculate on anything. So then we see Buck. Coming to the firehouse to deliver the papers, and they're joking with him about being the fire marshal. And he ends up seeing Ronda Rousey in there working out, asking Eddie for a spot, lifting weights. And then he sees her name over his name on the locker. And that's when he gets furious, and that leads into another major point. Because also at this time, Buck had to go meet with the, um, that there was with with all of the people falling in the, in the in the stairwell there was this ambulance chase a lawyer trying to get people to sue the city so after he left the firehouse buck had to go meet with his lawyer to discuss uh his report so he gets there to discuss his report the dude's trying to convince him to help him sue the city it didn't work and buck was like no these guys are my family i can't turn on the 118 and you want to sue the city and these firefighters that you're trying to sue and smear these guys would save you in a heartbeat and these are the people you want to sue but it kind of seeped in his mind a little bit thinking everything about what the guy said and i knew this whole episode at, at that point i knew it was going to shift because after that that's when we get to the point to where he ends up having dinner with athena and bobby and Bobby tells everyone 
well, well, just them and us, that he's the one that's holding Buck back from being a firefighter again because he th he don't think he's ready. Bobby, no, I can't believe you're the one that done it. We've been wanting Buck back as a firefighter forever. And if anything, he proved his mettle when he saved Christopher in the tsunami and saved other people as well. Why isn't he back on the fire force? <gasps> fire. <laughs> My bad, guys. Um, why isn't he back on the uh, back in the company, the uh, the fire company? Um, so then Buck is pissed, and I and agreeably so. I'm with Buck. If 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 it was the if it was the top brass, I'm pointing like you guys. If it was the top brass, I'd understand, and I and I can go with it, and I can go with the flow, and I understand a little bit. But Bobby, I know you think you're looking out for Buck, but. He's taking better care of, him, of himself. He's focusing on his meds and everything. He's ready. Even if you guys don't let him rush into the buildings, he's a paramedic as well. So he can still be there and he can just escort people outside. He doesn't have to, he doesn't have to sit on the sidelines. He can still be a firefighter and part of the team. He just can't save people like he was prior to the actual injury until Bobby thinks he's actually ready. That's what I think should have happened. But that's not the way that it went and buck was pissed and i agree with him and he left but then after that i don't agree with what happened after that he met with the lawyer again and him and the lawyer started talking and he's decided to sue the city sue company 118 and sue bobby personally for not letting him be a firefighter again and the dude told him he can't have any contact with anybody from the company or anybody that's related or cl or closely involved with anyone from the fire company. Dude, this whole episode, it shifted so much. Like, it felt so nice and fun at the beginning. And now, it's so serious. So then, after that, then we find out that Buck, he goes to Bobby's house. And then, you know, he, he I'm assuming he wakes him and Athena up. And he tells Bobby that I wanted you to hear it from me. And that is... That I'm suing you guys. I'm suing the company, suing the city, and I'm suing you personally, Bobby, for you guys not letting me go back to work. Did this? Oh boy. I understand your frustrations, Buck, and I agree with your frustrations. But for you to go out and sue the city and sue Bobby, I don't think that's the right thing to do. I think that's the wrong move that you're making. And if you lose this, just like the, the lawyer said, you could not be a firefighter at all anyone at any anymore no one's gonna hire you it's so serious now it, but that's not the only thing that happened this episode there was a lot of stuff that happened this episode um then we it, we had the whole sibling thing going and playing throughout the whole episode because of henrietta <laughs> hen wants to have um a sibling for her son so we had um her son in, uh, ended up playing with athena's son and they were arguing and then we had the two sibling brothers that was arguing in the car when their mother went off road. And that whole scene was just, dude, let's be real. If they were my kids after we're saved and secure and safe and sound, that's, that's grounds for punishment. I don't know. Maybe you guys can't look at TV. You can't touch technology. You can't even think of technology. Something needs to be done because at one point, dude, let's be real. It was the mom's fault for turning around while she was driving. But at the same time, it was... I don't really want to blame the kids. I mean, because that's what kids do. But it was her fault for turning around. Like, she should have been focusing mainly on the road. But then we also have the sibling um, sisters in that story. I thought for sure she was going to poison her sister with the margaritas. But she didn't. She decided to let her sister fall asleep after they drunk and I don't know how many margaritas. And put the ring on her finger. Oh, God. And her hand swole so big. They got like this big in her hand swole. Oh my gosh, can you get it off? You can, can you get it off? <laughs> so, but I loved how they done it this episode with the whole sibling thing. Trying to wrap that up because um, Hen and her wife wants to have another child. And I like how they done that throughout the whole episode. They made it cases and incidences where Hen saw siblings uh kind of reconcile or kind of see how they operate she saw the good side with the two boys on the cliff and the bad side with the two sisters and she still wants to have another child and i love and i love how they've done that that's just great writing on fox's part for 911. 
then we get to I'll talk about Christopher. Yeah. Then we get to see Christopher this episode. And he's still reeling from the, I thought, from the trauma of the tsunami. And it may still a little bit bother him a little bit. Even He even said that uh, the psychiatrist even told Eddie that. But that's what wasn't, that wasn't what his night terrors and nightmares was about. It was about, he was dreaming about his mom. And Eddie was so concerned that it was something com compared to the tsunami. And he wasn't talking to him about it. He wasn't even talking to the psychiatrist. But then we get a nice comparison about what Christopher could be going through from Ronda Rousey's character, a.k.a. Bosco, about how she felt when her dad had died and she felt so much better when her mom came out and told her that she felt sad too. And that kind of donged on Eddie's head and he, when, he, when he saw the picture of Eddie, Christopher, and mom, he kind of looked in the picture that Chris, Christopher was drawing at the psychiatrist's office looked like the one that was on the wall of his mom. And he was like, is this what you've been, is this mom? Is this what you've been dreaming about? And Christopher told him, yes. And Eddie told him, it's okay because I'm sad too. That was so good because I was wondering because like when it happened, it, you know, last season that happened and then, you know, the show pretty much ended. We didn't really see the whole grieving process of them dealing with the fact that they lost his mother. We had the funeral last season. We had her die. We had the funeral. We didn't really see them having the whole grieving process, but they kind of touched on that this episode, and I'm hoping they kind of push that out through this season to let them deal with that because we never got any, any, any resolved issues about that. And that was nice to see. And I like, I kind of like Ronda Rousey and Eddie's connection a little bit. I don't, I don't really push them together as a relationship, but... I wouldn't be mad if it happened because I, I kind of like the chemistry together and she seems like she's her character on here seems like a nice character for Eddie's stable ground grounded life and I'm okay with that now let's talk about something that like just changed the whole perspective man because we're gonna talk about Maddie seeing Maddie and Chimney having lunch or whatever or dinner and Maddie dropped the plate she, she got real scared she dropped the plate and she touched him and she turned around and she was like ready, like really angry and shocked. Now, I know what it was about. I know it was about her ex-husband and her, his abusive tendencies toward her and her just being a victim of domestic violence. But I'm thinking that it, just like Chimney said, it, it just hit her all of a sudden. She was happy and she was having a wonderful life, just having a good time with Chimney and all of a sudden it hit her and that is kind of what sent Maddie in this spiral this episode. I don't want her to have made all of this progress to go backwards and not get back to her normal, grounded, and wonderful self because she's going down a dark hole and Chimney's trying to help, but she doesn't want it. She 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 kinda made she kinda made her way back a little bit, but it's still like like it's tugging at her a little bit. So she gets this 911 call and it's a lady she didn't say anything multiple times when she called but then she finally decided to say something and all of a sudden her husband grabs the phone and was like hangs up maddie does her due diligence and calls back and trying to find out who she is and even disguised herself like yes sir for 49.95 we have this cleaning stuff that we don't want it and take our name off your calling list so she was she was smart but she was checking on the lady as well and that kind of messed with her mind also because she was thinking about her ex-husband. And that sent Maddie down a dark, dark path because she ended up sitting outside these people's house with a hood on, almost ran this dude over just because she was so angry. There was so much going on in this episode and I'm hoping Maddie doesn't take that extra plunge because then she tries to play cop and she finds out where the lady works, gets her to be her trainer and then get introduced to the husband and lies and says that she's a nurse. It's a good thing she said that because the lady was like a 911 operator. Well, I talked to a 911 operator today. So it's a good thing that that happened. But, and she told she told the lady she was a nurse because she did used to be a nurse. But I'm hoping Maddie, she made so much progress from her ex-husband. And I hope that this lady and her husband's relationship and problem and situation doesn't push Maddie over the edge to where she can't 
come back from because she's so entangled and wrapped around domestic violence and it's a serious issue and I love how the show handled it because Maddie's handled the situation on her own last time and I love that but I don't want her to do it this time because this time it's going to be me outside the law's means I don't if you get what I'm saying that's pretty much that all that happened this episode man but I'm telling you there was some great moments in this episode and I loved it but this is your boy Dick Incredible don't forget to smash that like button until you can't smash it anymore comment down below and I'll be sure to respond to each and every one of them and subscribe but only if you really want to man and remember the 911 brings the drama man peace out